Um, so Jeremy's going to start recording, um, which he should start recording right now. Um, so this is Lisa Soto meeting of the parks committee. It is 737 PM on. What is today's date? January, January 13th. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, wait, is this the wrong agenda? I went through all of that and I think. I think I have the wrong agenda. Great. Sorry about that. Hold again and I will pull up the right agenda. Let's see. And of course, now Adobe wants to install an update on me. So just when I thought I had it, uh, <laughs> just when I thought I had it going, give me a few more minutes. I apologize again for the delay. Okay, now we're in business. January 13th. That is that was the clue that it was the wrong uh, agenda when I saw the wrong date on the agenda. So anyway, uh, welcome everybody to the parks committee meeting. Uh, first order of business is that we need to assign someone to take minutes. Um, I cannot, I cannot take minutes and, and run a meeting at the same time. It's, it's very difficult. Um, so we have three people. Um, we have three members of the committee on tonight, Debbie, Janice, or Edith. If one of you could take minutes, if you can't take it right now, um, because you're, you know, occupied of uh, this meeting is being recorded. So you can always just take some minutes later, but I do need one of you guys to take the minutes. I'm driving so I cannot. I'm sorry, say that again, Edith. That was Debbie. I'm driving. I cannot. Oh, take <laughs> sorry. I don't know why I thought you sounded like Edith. Um, that's fine, but you can always take them later because the meeting is being recorded. So, um, Debbie and Lisa, it is yep. me now. If you see my picture, you'll see I'm wearing a big bandage on my nose. Um, my eyes are affected. Once they take this bandage off, I'll be very happy to take minutes. Okay. I, I hope you're I hope you're getting better. You know, I hope so too. Doing a lot. Um so I'm yeah, Debbie. I'm sorry to hear I'm sorry to hear that you had, you know, that going on Edith, but I cannot see you because driving it's only in auditory mode. Yeah, so I, I don't have any pictures up for some reason. I don't see anybody's video. Um so yes, Debbie, would you mind just taking them later after, you know, well, I'll get you the recording. If you can give me the recording, I can do it off of recording. Awesome. Thank you, Debbie. Um, okay, great. So we've got that. Next up is the review of the October minutes. Again, there was a delay on getting that uh on getting these minutes done um because I had to do them and I've been myself have been very sick over the past few months, so it took a while. But um they are up. Um hopefully everyone has had a chance to review them. Um, and I'd like to uh, take a motion to uh, uh, motion to uh, accept the minutes. 
I make a motion to accept. Great. Do we have a second? Second. I second it. Great. Are there any um any any discussion on the minutes? No. No discussion. Okay. So um any any uh abstentions? Any uh any against? Okay, then we will the minutes are accepted as is unanimously. Um, next on the agenda, we have Michael Ortiz from, um, from the parks department, um, <coughs> during our last meeting and, and Michael, if you had a chance to, um, if you had a chance to review the, um, the minutes, there were a number of questions regarding the construction in Loretto, but, um, I think people had questions about a few other properties. So, if you can give us an update on what's going on, starting with Loretto and then um, any other updates you might have, and then we'll open it up to questions from the board. Hi, I'm just going to jump in here. My name's Andrew Penzi. I am the uh, team leader, capital team leader for the parks department. So I, I could uh, take this one from Mike and, uh, you know, just explain what their latest on Loretto. If that's all right. That um, sounds great. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah, so my team manages the design and construction and procurement uh, of the project. And I, I think everyone's probably familiar with the delays thus far. So I'm not really gonna, not really gonna concentrate on that too much uh, for anyone who is not. I'll just say very briefly that, uh, you know, the project did suffer some uh, delays initially. Um, it was caught up in a change, um, an agency wide change um, where, just related to the electric service um, and how we get electric for the park. And that uh, there, it was one of a handful oh. of projects actually that caught up, got, got caught up in that. Um, excuse me one second. I just have to move locations because I have a dog <laughs> yapping at my leg. So let me just move over and so I could avoid that distraction. Um, so sorry. So yeah, so it was one of a handful of projects caught up in the um, that changeover and it did delay us. We had to essentially redesign the whole electrical system, uh, refile with DOT Con Ed, and um, we uh, it required some change orders on the part of construction. So that was the uh, long story short for that. And then most recently, uh, when the contractor was out there working again, we discovered that the drainage system uh, was compromised more than we were led to believe initially. Uh, we, we did a detailed sort of TV inspection, which revealed some uh, potential problems down the line. It wasn't really a problem right now, but I think in uh, five or 10 years, it could have developed into something major. So we had to address the drainage system and reconstruct that. So that's, again, the, just the very brief overview of past concerns. Fortunately, uh, the contractor is out there working. We have developed uh, a new completion date of the end of May, and that's what we're shooting for now. Uh, we're on track for that. Uh, the contractor's been out there pouring concrete curbs, weather permitting, and once his curbs are finalized and poured, he'll be able to uh, start grading the site for asphalt in the spring. Uh, all the subsurface work is complete at this point, all the utility work, subsurface work. Um, so concurrent to the uh, concrete uh, going in, and then after the concrete curbs are in, he'll be putting in his fences and fence work. And uh, concurrently to that, we are going to start seeking uh, approval of the electric system. So once the system it was designed, once it's installed, it then requires uh, is quite a lengthy inspection process to make sure that everything is safe to code and working. Um, and sometimes that trips us up towards the end of a job uh, if that's not squared away. So we're trying to accommodate that now uh, during the winter time, so that way in the spring he can pave his asphalt probably. Uh, by the end of April, we're anticipating paving the asphalt. Again, this is weather permitting, uh, and then uh, he'll be able to uh, color seal coat. So that's our schedule currently. Uh, like I said, the contractor has been working. He wasn't there today, uh, but there are behind the scenes things that take place. He had a couple uh, questions asking the designers to verify some dimensions. The designers were out there today verifying the dimensions. So I expect uh, work will continue next week. And when do you expect the completion date? Uh, so we're targeting the end of May. Oh, that's great. So let's let's pause here before you go on to any other projects. And um, 
uh, open it up to the board mem board members if you have any questions just on this particular park. None. Okay. That that sounds that's great. Um uh members of the public, do you have any questions on this particular park? That is fantastic. <laughs> it, it, doesn't happen, it doesn't happen often, Andrew. You did a good job. <laughs> yeah, I think we matched this one out probably previously. Uh, I think everyone's uh, or most people are familiar with this project. Great, great. So, um, do you have other other projects in our district that you can update us on? Uh, I didn't bring a list with me of all the projects in the district, but I'm certainly familiar with them all. So, uh, if you you know have any particular questions about any projects, certainly I can answer them. But like, I don't have a list of all the projects in uh, okay. the board at this moment. Sure. So, um, I'd, I'd like to another Do you have any info on the Waring Park? Yes, I would like to ask one question. We've been asking for the Parks Department, the commissioner knows about it, about a sturdy offense at the park on Bronx Park E. When the cars come down from the Bronx River, they make that right turn. It's dangerous. It, they go right into the fence. Any word on that? That one's all you, Mike. Yeah, I, I can take this one. Hi. Uh, so we we are actually uh, procuring some estimates on that uh, as we speak. Uh, we just uh, received some uh, updated uh, prices for our citywide services um, uh, con uh, contract that that does work uh, like fence work. So Andrew seems to do more of the general um, construction, um, you know, general construction of. Uh, they also they renovate it from top to bottom. Our citywide services they handle more of the the smaller items like the fence work and uh, pavement and things like that. Let so me tell you, uh, we're actually getting an updated it, number on that. My concern is that work should be done in the winter before the kids go in and use the park. Yeah. Uh, so I know that, that the commissioner has been uh, speaking to some of the elected officials about trying to get some funding, but, but at this moment Thanks. there is no funding. I uh, no funding. Okay, I guess it's up to us to work on the politicians. We're working them from our, our side. It would be helpful if you can work on them from your side as well. We will try. I promise. Uh, someone mentioned wearing uh, playground. I, I could. Yeah, on schedule. Yeah, it's on schedule. Contract is working. We have an anticipated completion. Uh, in summertime, um, shooting for the end of July in 2022. Thank you. That was you. That was you, Debbie, right? That just asked about wearing. Yeah, yeah, oh. I asked about wearing. Okay, great. If everybody can just before you ask a question, this will make it easier for the minutes. Just identify yourself before you speak. Um, that would be great. Um, okay. Janice, did you have Janice any questions? Walcott? Yes, oh, yes, Janice, go. Uh, definitely. This is Janice Walcott. And I've been asking the Parks Department about a reconstruction of um, Zimmerman Playground. Uh, we had a August of this last year, we had a, um, a block party. We used the playground and there were no, uh, there, there are no bathroom facilities because we can't use the park house. It has to be torn down and reconstruct it. More than likely they have to do the whole park. I've been asking for what was the park um, name? What park was this? Zimmerman Playground. Zimmerman. Yeah, yeah, so go ahead. Thank you for that question. Um so at Zimmerman Playground, as you mentioned, um the building, the field house that's there is currently um inaccessible to the public. It was never in the, it was not designed um to have uh, public it was not so designed as what? Mike, you, uh, you kind of cut out. Designed. Can you start over? Mike, you, you, you kind I'm of sorry. faded it, away a little bit. Yeah, if you could start over. Sure. Um, maybe if I turn off my camera, it'll be less choppy. Is that better? Yes, that's that better. Well, go ahead. Okay, so, um, Unfortunately, the building at Waring was never designed to have a public restroom. So from the this is Zimmerman. I'm, I'm sorry. Zimmerman. I'm sorry. Uh, Zimmerman, correct? Yeah, 
It was never designed to have um, public restrooms from the outside. Uh, while it was a preschool, it was meant to have a uh, bathrooms inside for the, the children to use inside. Um, we've, we've been studying that. some. Mm -hmm. We've been studying some ways. That, but okay, go to, ahead. To make it. Let you yeah, so we've been studying some ways uh, to reconstruct the building in order to create some uh, public facing restrooms. Uh, but that is going to require, unfortunately, um, quite a significant amount of money. Um, Listen, and, and I've been asking at it. for a figure for years. Okay, I need a figure in order to even approach some of the politicians. Some have committed. However, not only the the building has to be torn down, and in the in the interim, I'm sure they're going to have to do the park. I need figures. I've been asking for them for years. Give me figures, okay? So, Reconstruction. Yeah, we're working on figures as we speak. Down. Go ahead. We're working on the figures as I'm we speak. I'm sorry? You keep saying it's a, a, a large amount. I want to know a figure. Excuse me? I don't know if you heard Mike. He was just saying that he's currently yeah, he's working saying on he's this. working on an amount. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, he did. Working on he's the figure since it. last year. The last, not only last year. You know, I've been asking for these figures forever. When are you going to have them? I thought that, and Janice, maybe I'm misremembering. I, I very well could be, but I thought at the either the last meeting or the meeting before. Um, the other Michael, uh, what's the other Michael's name, Dorian? Um, I thought he gave like a rough estimate and it was really high. Do, do you okay, remember fine. that? But it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't exact. He wasn't it was sure. Rough no. Yeah, he wasn't, wasn't sure. You're right. He wasn't sure. So I'm yeah. just trying to get some figures. So we it's looked Matt. at it. Um, Can Matt. we get some figures? Yeah. The, so the again, game is we Matt. looked at it and we came up with a number. Uh, and the number was about, I'm talking about five years ago, the number was about uh, $17 million. However, Mike, that we... didn't account for for uh, creating public restrooms either. So uh, we don't know if it would just be better to tear down the whole building and start again. We we don't want to do that because ultimately that would be more expensive. You have to do that. Looking... There are, first of all, you have to do that. That building cannot be used asbestos, water leaks, and everything else. It was said the building has to come down. I think what Mike's so, saying that too, though, is even if um, the building were to come down, sometimes we'll utilize the foundation, some structural elements, and you know, gut everything and reconstruct the whole building. It'll look like new when we're done. But uh, sometimes, though, we try to reuse elements just because, like Mike, Mike said, it, it's a lot cheaper that way. Hey, Mike, it's Matt. <clears throat> At the end of uh, the middle of 2021, we did, there was a number that was put out and it was documented and the number it said, and I believe it was exactly, it said north of $21 million. Okay, fine. Can you come up with another figure? Because, you know, not only the building has to be gutted, you have to do things in the park and if the park has to be renovated, fine. Get me a figure. I've been saying this forever. Forever. Okay. We have hundreds of kids, thousands of kids in the, hundreds of kids right there in the coops and in the surrounding areas. That park is used by so many people, so many children, and it's ignored. Not fair. Okay? Stop telling me you gave me a figure, you gave me this figure. You gave me that figure. However, I need a solid figure. Richie left, you know, funding. Natalia said she would give funding. But if you're not giving me a figure, who am I, you know, what am I talking about? That's not fair. Hello? Yeah, we're here. As we mentioned, we're working on an estimate. You know how long, okay. uh, Mike, to her point, she has been asking for a while. Do you know so, have an idea of how long again, it takes? Yeah, so again, we did provide a number a couple of years ago. Uh, that figure, unfortunately, required a lot of ramps 
in order for it to get up to uh, to have the bathroom at a level that was uh, compliant with the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, so it, it would take up a lot of the park. Um, we we think that we came up with another solution now, so our architects are estimating it. However, please note that um, estimates do take a long time, especially for buildings, because they actually have to price out each individual item. Uh, so it takes quite some time, it takes weeks. Uh, we recently resubmitted another estimate based on another idea um, that may make it more feasible to have public restrooms. Um, but again, we recently resubmitted that a couple of weeks ago, so it is going to take, you know, some weeks to get that. Okay, weeks fine. I can understand that, but I'm looking for figures. Okay, I've been looking on. We long want time. to provide you figures. <laughs> and not All only right. that building, there are other areas in Zimmerman that need to be addressed. Okay. We have estimates for the rest of the playground. And we have okay. provided those numbers. Right. I'd like to see them. Okay. All right. Well, keep please keep us updated um, when you when you get that or just the status is on that estimate. Um, I believe you know now that um, uh, Eastchester is being worked, you know oh, now yeah. that Eastchester is being worked on. Yeah. This is our next big priority. So we really want to make sure that we. We can it has also been one of our priorities to the council member uh, representing this area for the past few years as well. Okay. Yeah. So please keep us updated on that. Um, board members, do you have any other questions um, on anything other than Bronx Park East? Because that's a whole that's a whole separate issue. Um, that's the next thing on the agenda. But do you have any other questions on any of the other parks? Great. Okay, so we're going to move on to Bronx Park. I don't know if Bronx Park East or Bronx Park. I don't know what the official. What are you talking means. about? The dog run? Yes, the dog it's run Bronx and the homeless Park. encampments. The Bronx, Bronx Park, Park, right? Bronx Road. Okay. okay. So, yeah, Bronx Park East is the street. I guess that's what I'm mixing it up with. Um, so we have a constituent, a few constituents, um, who have or community members, um, who have been reaching out to us, as you guys know, um. Of regarding some dog, some lights at the dog run, um, and from what I've been on these email chains, and from what I understand, it's um, it's going to take a long, it's going to take quite a while to actually get permanent lights in there. So they were at least hoping for some short term solutions in the meantime, while a longer term solution okay, is being Lisa. worked on. Yes, Lisa, this is Edith Blitzer talking. We had the meeting February the eighth of the Pelham Parkway Neighborhood Association. Mm -hmm. Our guest speaker is going to be uh, Valerie Velasquez, Marjorie Velasquez, who is mm -hmm. our new councilwoman. The people that are interested in these lights, I suggest come to the meeting and bring it up to her in the public and let's see what she says. Oh, great. Well, while we have parks on the on while we have parks here, though, they have been apprised of the situation. So I just wanted to see if they're if they have been able to make any movement on either a long-term or a short-term solution for this. Hi, this is Matt Doran. I'm the park manager. So I, I, I know we have been part of the conversations for the last few months and there have it correct. There's, there's two ways to approach this one to get permanent lighting that's tapped into the DOT service. It's going to be a bigger project, probably a capital project. It'll be a smaller capital project, but capital project. Um, Two days. But I have been in discussions with uh, the operations for the Bronx, and we are currently looking into a more temporary solution that we possibly could do quicker and we are investigating the feasibility of solar power lights that would just get mounted on poles. And so um, there's not too many areas to mount that. So the, the, the physical mounting of those, we probably have to do some type of insulation, but I have, I, I have looked at some of the products that vendors 
are producing out there for solar power lights. And um, it's in discussion currently in Bronx operations office. All right, Matt, this is Edith again. Is there any way we can get at least a temporary lights in there? Yeah, that's what it is. That's the only option to do it. We aren't going to, we are not going to put uh, generator fed lights over there for that. All right, but even if we get a temporary light, it makes it safer for the people that are using the park. It yeah, took us I eight. It took us eight years to get that park going. And we're happy to see it's being used, but now because it gets dark so early, it's kind of dangerous. I understand. I understand that. But what I'm telling you is this is the best option for us to go forward. We're not going to, we have, there are light towers that you could get that are powered by diesel generators that, that are, you know, independent of any <clears throat> infrastructure. We're not going to be putting those over Working? there. So um, it's just, it's, it's not something that we're going, going to do because of how stuff gets vandalized and. Mm -hmm. um, right. That makes sense. You're, you're, you're putting sense. it out there for first off it to get stolen. Second option is for it to get vandalized. <clears throat> and we, will, we will settle for that. And I certainly understand we don't want to put anything down. That's going to be taken away within days. We want something that's going to stay there. Right. So anything that we can put on there, we'd be greatly appreciated. Excuse me. What's your so what when you yeah, when you say you, oh, sorry, go ahead. temporary and you want stuff something out there as soon as possible? What's the time frame you're talking about as soon as yesterday? Possible? All right. Well, that's not happening. I can tell you that. I mean, will it happen before? Will it happen before the I time think, changes and it's no longer think, an issue? Yeah, I think it's. Yeah. I think solar power lights are in North my dear. Lucas. Uh, yeah, but you have to understand, I can't go out and I can't buy them and put them up yesterday. Um, and so what I'm trying to do well, is I expedite this. I don't, I don't expect you to run to Home Depot and put them up. I'm just, I understand I'm that. Saying, the comment know, I, from I, the I, other board member was yeah. yesterday. You guys want it. And I'm trying to be realistic with you. I, you know, we're, we're, yeah, we're not saying no. We're yeah, investigating, but I want you though. to understand a reasonable time frame for us to have them up there might be within the next two months. That's that fine. Sense. That makes That's sense. Fine. Okay. We'll take it. We'll accept it. We'll say thank you. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. Anything you can do to uh, expedite it, you know, because uh, winter, winter is here. And uh, I don't know when it's going to start getting light uh, at a normal time, but I know it's going to be soon. <laughs> It'll be here before we know it. So the sooner Please. you can get it done, we appreciate it, Matt. Yes, um, Mike, you work in the commissioner's office. Did you have any more information other than the last stuff I had on this? Um, so basically, it it was uh, uh up in the uh, another dog run. Um, they they uh, a lot of the residents had installed solar lights themselves, uh, but they had asked us to mount them on the pole. So that's basically where we got the idea to do this from. Uh, it is on the work agenda for our borough crews to do. However, they do have a lot of work there. It's a crew that goes around. They do a lot of the heavy, um, the heavy duty work for us. So it is on their to do list. But it's it, they on, they honestly have a lot of work to do ahead of them. So um, as Matt mentioned, uh, probably in the next two months uh, is my understanding that it can be done. Uh, but hopefully. Um, hopefully that'll be the case and it won't be much longer than that. Um, I think there's some background noise people. If you're not, if you're not speaking, if you could please mute yourself. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry. This is Dan. Um, I, I was the 1 of the constituents that brought up the issue. Um, yes, Dan, go ahead. I'm just wondering, you know, for the short term, um, uh, Mike, I understand you guys have a lot of things going on. But uh, you know, if, bank. you know, if there's any way you could prioritize, um, you know, this, um, yeah, you know, no. given that, yeah, oh, hold on. I mean, the weather. I'm sorry, guys, I, wait, as wait, much hold as on, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut everyone off, but please, if you're not speaking right now, if you're not part of this conversation, I need you to mute yourself. If not, I'm gonna have to mute everybody, and then people just have to unmute themselves when they're speaking. 
Yeah. Thanks. Um, Dan, I, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, it, it is a priority for us. We definitely want to get this done, but there are some things that uh, actually are, are, are a bit more important than this. This crew also does a lot of our uh, snow removal and a lot of our other safety okay. items. Uh, like whenever there's like a dangerous fence situation, uh, you know, and things like that. So th their work is very much, um, you know, calculated whenever we do give them projects, we don't like to overload them because their everyday work is actually like pretty important safety items. You know? Okay, guys, I'm nope. gonna, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to mute everybody and then, um, uh, you can continue your conversation, Daniel and, um, Mike, just, you just have to unmute yourself. So I'm muting everybody. That's the roof. It's a roof. Hi. Um, okay. No, I understand. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, we. I think, you know, we as the dog run are really appreciative of the parks and also of the community board, you know, helping us, you know, with, with this, with this issue. Um, I think I, I spoke to, um, uh, chief, uh, Lawrence Scone, I believe over the holidays, right before the holidays. And it seems like he's, you know, he, I think our comrade, he was the one that mentioned the, um, the solar lights. And I guess I would just. Um, based on our conversation, I thought that, you know, this could be done sometime in, you know, in January, but I understand, you know, with snow and everything else, there's other things that, you know, that goes, that goes on, uh, the crew, you know, we need to have priorities. Um, but, yeah. you know, it just, you know, it just, I think for us, just, you know, like the winter is only for a few months. So we're hoping, you know, like that, you know, the light is addressing the issue right now. Um, you know, we're hoping that it's not like. By the time you get around to it, the day will be longer, and then there's a less need for this. Um, but you know, uh, again, we you know we are appreciative of everything you guys are doing for us. In, re in response to that, this this is Matt. I'm the park manager again. I work directly with Chief Schoons on a daily basis, and so him and I have talked about this. Um, I'm personally the one that's looking at you know the stuff that's available for us, which. Which particular models, which vendors we're going to use, um, it would you know, how much the the agency is willing to spend on this. So this is something that we will do as best as we can. Um, I'm not going to sit here and give you an an, an open ended. Oh, we'll get to it then. I think a couple of months is is very reasonable for at the speed of what Parks works, relatively fast if you ask me. So which is different. And what I'm trying, I guess, communicate is your the speed of stuff works for you to purchase something or decide to go with them. Something is is different from even us doing something in house. Um, and Mike sort of explained a little bit before, but um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Mike Ortiz. It's not a capital project. This is something that, as a manager, I'm directly involved with with operations, with our borough crew staff, with our shop staff. Those are everybody that I work with directly all the time, every single day, and we'll do the best we can putting that in the pri list of priorities where it is. I understand, we understand how important it is to you and that your, the point is for you to get it done as soon as possible because the daylight is short now. Um, but at, it gets to a point where we can only speed it up this much and I'll do as much as I can to speed that up. Thanks, Matt. We appreciate it. Um, the next concern um, was was brought up at um, I think it was brought up at a leadership meeting. I can't remember which meeting it was brought up at, um, but a member of the community brought up uh, the fact that there are some homeless encampments in Bronx Park, which I personally haven't witnessed. So I can't speak too much to it, um, but it was brought up as a concern. So since I have you guys here, I wanted to see. Uh, if you could address that, or if you're familiar with this uh, issue, Matt. This is something that in we as a department deal with in every aspect of the borough on a con constant basis. So there is homeless encampments in Bronx Park. Bronx Park, you refer it as Bronx Park for you guys in CB 11. It's really only a small part of Bronx Park. 180th Bronx Park goes from 180th Street all the way up to 241st Street. So um, the section in Community Board 11 
doesn't have as much as many homeless encampments as the other northern section of the parks are in community board 12 but they do show up uh, occasionally right now i work with our parks enforcement and we do intervention as quickly and as soon as we could see it and determine that it's at the level where we can do it uh, legally and we do it. And that's, that's really all I could comment on that. You have to understand the rules that we're bound by when it comes to homeless encampments have to go past or over a certain threshold. Like if you see somebody that's sleeping on a, a park bench uh, and they're just sleeping there, that doesn't constitute homeless. That constitutes somebody sleeping on a park bench. So we don't have anything we could legally do to extract them from a park. If you see somebody that's there with all of their belongings and it's clear that they're probably homeless and they're there with their belongings, we can't kick them out of the park just because they have all their belongings there. Homelessness is not a, it's not a crime. Um, and they're allowed to be that and they're also allowed to use the parks so there is there's there's a lot we have to deal with when we're talking about and, and trying to do intervention for homelessness and we have to make sure we check all the boxes before we go there and get to the level where we are able to extract them from the park and there's certain things that have to happen so if we see them one day that's one day and we're going to take notes and we're going to note that and we're going to document that and then the next day they might do something else and and over the course of a couple of days at that point we have everything we need as far as evidence to determine that they're homeless and then we'll we'll intervene so right now there's because of the temperatures we do um constant homeless checks and if anybody sees any particular homeless encampments in a park especially during the winter and cold months i encourage you to call that into 311, be as specific as you can to the local area. And, and we have people in the agency that will get out there and get on that and at least attempt to help people to give them options of what they could do and where they could go. Okay, thank you. I uh, appreciate the update. Um, board members, do you have any questions on um, any of these Two things that we spoke about with Bronx Park before I open it up to the gallery. Any other questions for? for I have an issue. Yes, go ahead, Janice. This is Janice Walcott. Yep. Um, since the Zimmerman Playground has not been even gotten uh, figures, you said you're going to get them met in a couple of weeks. By our next meeting, I should have those figures. But in the meantime, I'm putting a request in for more porta potties, okay? When the park does open up after the winter. Thank you. Thanks, Janice. Uh, Debbie, Edith, right. are you are you um are you good? Do you have any questions? Hi, I'm sorry, this is uh, Mike Ortiz. Uh, I think it's going to take more than more time than by next meeting to have that estimate. I'm sorry, it, take, it takes it quite some time minute. to have building estimates done. It's taken years, okay? So I think that should be a priority now, okay? It's taken too long. And too long Ma without- Ma'am, I'm going to get you that estimate as soon as I'm possible. I'm not finished. Too long without bathroom facilities for children and the parents that bring your children there, okay? So do me a favor, prioritize those figures, all right? I've been asking for them for years. Yep, they're prioritized That's along with the other part. 40 prioritizations that we have on the list. Thank you, ma'am. Are you talking about the other um, parks that are under construction now? Because we're not even under construction. No, ma'am. Is no. that what you're talking about? We have parks and playgrounds that haven't been renovated in 30 years that we're also estimating and trying to get them reconstructed as well. We understand your concern and we are prioritizing it. Um, we have pushed it to the elected officials for the last couple of years. Um, you know, 
as I mentioned, we're going to update those figures. We're coming up with new ways to try and make those conference, that conversation accessible. It takes time because it's a building. I apologize okay. that you have not received okay. an estimate in the past, but we have mm -hmm. we have done estimates in the past. They are since outdated. Okay, I'll, I'll go along with that. However, when the park is open, spring, summer, I need those porta potties in there because it's ridiculous. No bathroom facilities, ridiculous. Hundreds of kids are in that park every summer. In the spring, whatever, get those porta potties in. Okay. Like, is that something that you can do? No, unfortunately, it's not. If if there's an organization that wants to uh, rent them and take responsibility for the contract, uh, that's something that Matt can maybe work out. Uh, but we will not. That, we will most likely not have a contract to do. Yeah, so. there were porta potties mm -hmm. this past summer. Who 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 put those in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, there were, uh, there were speak to the park commissioner. There. I'm sorry. Matt, do you know? Sure. I could update you he on knows. the parties. We, okay. the department, yeah. put those porta potties mm -hmm. in. They weren't there all summer. They were there in just for the last couple of months. Um, because I was screaming like a nut. It was probably okay. uh, they were put in in September and October. They were put so, in, in August. When we had uh, the date, the Monday after the block party, not even for the block party, the Monday after. They were supposed to come that Saturday. They didn't come till that Monday. They were there till about a few months ago. So, so Matt, From do August you think the way that you got them before you can get them in for this summer? I not will. I, all I could tell you is I will investigate it to see if that's within our power to do that. We had. We had extra money last year that we were able okay. to do uh, certain things through COVID. And this was one of the things we chose to do at the end of the year. Um, but I'll investigate it. That's all I could say at this point. Okay. And then if not, if you, if, if for whatever reason parks isn't able to do it, is this something that we can, uh, appeal to an elected official to help with funding for? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, elected officials could, if they have it in their budget to okay. be able to do, you know, establish a contract with one of the porta potty companies and have a, have them pay for the services in there. We would absolutely permit for it. Okay. Um, allow, I mean, that'll be, our, that'll be plan B. <laughs> we really wanted to try to come from you since we're trying to get funding from them for the bigger projects. So if you can keep us, if you can try to investigate that and keep us updated, that would be great. So just, I know, I I'm going to try, I'm going to try to make this as, as quickly as I can. So mm -hmm. that, and, and I think you might understand more than anybody here, Lisa, because you mm -hmm. also work for a government agency. Oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> I feel your if pain. If I order something and I want it tomorrow, it might take me six months to get it. And yeah. so there's, there is nothing that I could do that Mike Ortiz could do that even the commissioner of this agency could do to expedite our, our, the, the way our purchasing works within the agency to speed stuff up. And I was directly involved with this, with just trying to get lights done for a, a big park down in the South Bronx, which, which we're talking about. The simple thing is getting. Getting someone in to get up there and change the light bulbs for this, all this sport lighting. And it took, it probably took eight months. It was just the, the, the most hair pulling experience you can, but there's nothing. Yeah, there's no, I feel your pain, but yeah. we're asking now in January. So if it takes six months and we get the porta potties in June, that'll be good. Yes, so it would be. So I will, like I said, I, I will look into it uh, in January, anticipating. Uh, the probably the start date. Um, we don't do it. We'll probably do it like May through October, something like that. Okay. That's what I'm looking at, just because that's but that's our busy season out there in I, the parks. But I, know. I will look into that right now. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. Yes, Debbie. Go ahead. Appreciate that. Yeah, I know. I know for a fact that it costs way less for the parks department to rent a porta potty 
than any other source to rent the, the porta potty. So we would we would much prefer the the uh, porta potties coming through uh, Parks Department because it would cost a whole lot less. Okay, I think I spoke with the commissioner maybe October, November at a meeting. And um, we spoke about, you know, the renovation, but I did get the porta potties uh, in August. Okay, I got them in August for the block for the day, the Monday after the block party. So we're requesting them now, and hopefully we'll have them by the spring, early summer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Janice. All, All right. right. So, I'm sorry. Did you have one more thing, Janice? That's it. That's okay. it for me. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna move on unless um, Debbie uh, or Edith have something. I'm I'm sorry, Lisa. Okay. Hold on. Right, right now, Daniel, this is still for the board. We haven't opened it to the for the gallery yet. Oh. Um, sorry. Uh, Edith, Debbie, do you guys have any questions or concerns? Are you guys okay? I'm currently okay right now. Okay. Edith, you're good? Or maybe we lost her. I think she's I think she did say she was gonna sign out early. Okay, so um moving on, we're gonna go open to the Lisa, gallery. I am here. Oh, you are there. Hi. <laughs> I wanted to ask Matt if he any if he has any idea how much it costs to rent a porta potty. No. Oh. Okay, good answer. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the gallery session. Uh, Daniel, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I would just I just wanted to ask uh, for the, the light um, in the long term solution aspect of it. Um, you know, if we're going try, you know, if we're, if we're trying to do the, 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 the solar lights, should we keep as, um, you know, um, should we should we also work on the long term solution as well at the same time? Um, that's a good question, actually. And I I wish I had a good answer for you. And I'm going to try to do it, answer your question logically and objectively. Um. The, so. A long term solution, if we want, if you want DOT lights in there, it's probably going to be a capital project. This is. That's what we've discussed what we've talked about. Um, and the capital process is long. It's you guys know about it. Most of all your. You know, what, what. You experience through all the parks you've seen, you know, you have a, a year of design. Now, I don't, I don't know how lights fit into that. I don't know that maybe Mike Ortiz has no, but it would still have to be outside funding. Capital funding, um, for the agency to go through there. So it's a long process. Now, can, can I now, say something? Let, could I, I just, let me, let me do me a favor. Just let me finish. Just let me finish. So, because I didn't fully explain just yet. So the short term is we're going to go and we're going to look at and, and hopefully get these solar lights. Now, I don't know how long they last, the longevity of these particular products are, but I guess what I'm asking for you to do is just be patient enough to wait for us to get the solar lights installed and then see how they are. And if they satisfy the desires that you guys have, then maybe they'll be sufficient. And, and maybe, like I said, I don't know, they're high enough. They're outside of getting vandalized or stolen, you know, something like that. And they might have a seven year lifespan on that. So that's something where it might be covered for seven years. And again, I'm just throwing this out there lot using logic and objective to probably answer your question because I don't have any better answer. For well, Matt, I was going to agree with you. Let's get what we can get for now and worry about and let's see how long they last and how good they do. So I definitely agree with you. Thank you. And, and my point being that the capital project is long and tedious anyway. So whether it's now or a couple 
months in the future that you start it and you don't you don't like the results of the solar lights, then I don't think it's going to be that much time because the process is already going to take the time. Right. Matt, I was also going to agree with you, and I was also going to add that Marjorie Velasquez, the new uh, council person, is going to be having participatory budget, and if people want, you know, people are not, you know, satisfied with the solar lights and they're looking to get long-term lights through the DOT, then they can ask Marjorie for that with the participatory budget. Yeah, I agree, and I think that's that's you know that works. Well, Debbie, that's why I suggest that people come to the meeting to meet her in person, face to face, and bring the questions to her. I I agree. What's the date is? What's the date for the meeting? February eighth. Okay. At twenty one thirty four Bonds Avenue. Oh, it's not going to be virtual. No, this will be in person. Okay, um, Daniel, is that is that everything? I'm going to move on to other members of the of the public. No, no, that's everything. Thank you. Okay, great. So just again, I, I always just go by the the order of how I see people on my screen. The next person I have here is Diana Finch. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, I have five quick things. Um, one, I wanted to just check in quickly about the plans for the farmer's market in Bronx Park East for the summer um, that's being spearheaded by Judy Desir. And I know, Matt, she's been in touch with you about it. And my understanding is that now she needs to connect with the DOT about a parking permit because the farmers need a place right next to the market area to park their trucks for the duration of the farmer's market. So um, I just wanted to ask Matt if there's anything, we're trying to help her out a lot on this because she's not from the neighborhood. So there's certain things she doesn't know, connections she doesn't necessarily have that we're trying to support her with. So I just wanted to ask Matt quickly if there was anything we should know or be aware of. Yeah. So her and I have had, you know, good conversations, lengthy conversations. And uh, right now, I guess you check with her to see exactly where she is. The, the, the thing is, at that curb, sidewalk curb, inside that, that's parks. And anything outside that? is not parks. And so that whole area, um, I showed her to the whole area and, and she was excited about an area that's outside our jurisdiction. We can't help her with any permitting or anything like that. If she secures uh, parking and everything she needs so the trucks could be there, then we could then, after that's secured, come in and issue parks permits to set up tables and to help facilitate this whole process by being able to use park space that's within our jurisdiction. That's currently where we stand. That's that's all I have on on the whole topic. Okay. And I hope it's not going to be like a chicken and egg problem where DOT says, well, you got to get the permit from the parks department first before you can talk to us. Well, if they do that, I mean, I'll be happy to talk okay. to the other agency and say, we intend to help her and we think it's a it's it's something that we want to support as an agency and but it's but the the biggest hurdles for this project is outside of parks because the biggest hurdles yeah. is parking in that area and we can't control that nor could we uh do any enforcement on that you hit that curb at the edge of the sidewalk parks is done then it's dot and it's nypd Right. Okay. And I think she was waiting too for a new commissioner. Right. Yeah. We're yeah. Right in the middle of the administration change with all, every agency. Right. So, um, all right. But, but I would be happy to have a conversation with any other agency to say park supports this idea with right. her. If you guys could get this done, then we intend to help her and permit wherever we can to help her. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then on the wearing playground reconstruction, um, 
thank you guys so much. It really seems to be coming along so quickly um, to the point where people are asking now, um, won't it be finished long before the end of July? Because it looks like it's almost done already. Um, so we wanna be able to manage expectations um, and tell people what is coming. We also have some very specific requests from the basketball guys who have been following it so closely. Um, so maybe I would just email Michael Ortiz about those. That's fine. Um, I, I just, I, you, you hear me knocking on wood. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's uh let's just keep the good vibes going. I don't want to talk about it. Um, I, we have a very good contractor, and as of this moment, um, you know, n no hiccups. Uh, I I don't know when they'll be completed. It it is supposed to be completed at the end of June. Uh, great things do happen. Um, so I I don't want to say what you just mentioned, but who knows, right? <laughs> and right. um, as as for the basketball. Um, the project is already designed uh, as is, so there's not many changes, but let me know what it is that, that it is, um, and maybe it's something that won't be too much of a lift. Right, it's small things like the three-point line. <laughs> um, I'll, okay. I'll talk about that, though. Um, okay. Then next request is, um, oh, and thank you, too, for the very swift response to the um theft of the oh, materials. Oh my God, no, thank you guys so much for that. Thank you. Well, it was all a community member who just noticed and took pictures and came to us and said, what do we do? So yeah. people are watching that site every single day. <laughs> yeah, I, I told the contractor that. I said, I, said uh -huh. I don't even have to come around because the community will be watching you. Yep. Um, next question is, we really want to try to get some trash cans in the park area that's Pelham Parkway west of Boston Road leading up to the um, entrance and exit to the Bronx River Parkway. And we understand placing them far enough away from the parking lot so that people don't use them as residential trash cans, but that part of the park the trash accumulates there so, I mean, not now, but so quickly during the summer, um, we really, really, really need trash cans. And there are none, zero, none. So our plea is for some trash cans for that sadly neglected area. And I think, I, I don't know if it was you or somebody else bought this up previously, because this sounds familiar, because I remember Matt saying, he he would look into it, but if he puts trash cans there, people will still put it out, put their garbage outside of the trash can. Does that well, we sound will, familiar? We will <laughs> commit yep. to, you know, we can flyer the buildings that are adjacent there and tell people, no, these are not for household trash. We're fine if they're placed far from the parking lot so that it's not convenient for people to put their household trash there, but we want it for the park. So that the park's not so, full of litter. right. Let me let me jump in on this, Diane. How many trash cans are currently there right now? Zero. Zero. Yes. We put I put two trash cans there this fall, and it was after our October meeting. And I know they were there because I instructed I instructed them, and I could find the emails where I instructed my staff to do it. And okay. I drove by and I saw them there myself. So I, I, I told them that area it's in between. If you're going, if you're headed west on Pelham Parkway, right, right before, right. right before you go under the Bronx river parkway, it's right there on your right. And just on the other side of that is where Bronx park zone two, which is all of wearing there starts right. where you go in there. So it's that, it's that space, that green space there. So two were placed there and there's zero there now. This is not a surprise to me at all. What happened to those trash cans? I don't know. You, you don't know. Right. Um, so that's the other thing that we look at is if we keep putting trash cans out uh -huh. at the request of community members and they keep disappearing, right. then 
it's just it's fruitless for us to do that because we we you know we pay for all these trash cans it's a budget item it comes out of us now i am i am directly i'm the person that we could have these conversations offline from here okay and talk about you know the strategy because i don't want to waste time here but i'm the person that gets the trash cans out in the park in the parks um uh, we we i get about 75 new trash cans a year for Bronx Park and Bron okay. Bronx Park 11 and in some other areas altogether for for at all my parks probably about 150 that's a lot of trash cans to keep replacing every single year right and you would think that if we're if i'm putting out 150 trash cans a year i mean we get these things come they come in on a tractor trailer that's how many trash cans we order for the whole borough every single year right. where are they going and that's just one of those things that I look at to say, I can't just keep losing trash cans by putting them out there. So there's two things at play here. One, what happens where they go? Is it, is it a spot that's conducive for use? The other one, is it going to, um, is it going to promote illegal dumping and people, you know, just do that. So you got a, you got a little bit of that stuff in that play area, but I, I, I support your idea of attempting to get trash cans out there to see if it deters the amount of trash. I am all for that. Uh, you know, I say I'm the parks manager, but I'm also like um, trash and waste management. You know, that's like, I should have a PhD when you get into that, into the parks department in New York City, and unfortunately. But, um, you know, we work in that area every time. So you have my email, right? Yes, I do. Yeah, let's okay. just touch base and, and okay. you know, I can make it happen. That's not that difficult. So, okay, thank you. Um, and then on Zimmerman, um, BPECA yeah. will commit to helping to work on this. Um, I know that, like, for the Waring Playground renovation, it took funding from the state senator, from the city council, which we got through participatory budgeting from the mayor's office, um, millions of dollars from each of those. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that, we um, mm -hmm. right, we have to reach out to all the elected officials, including our congressperson, who I think did put in a proposal for funding. Yes. The, uh, she did, but to Janice's yeah. point, it'll be much easier once we have an actual figure to, mm -hmm. to go back to. Okay. And my last question is, um, any word on a new Bronx commissioner? We're definitely going to miss Iris. She's still here. Oh, I thought she was, I thought she oh, was leaving okay. for the new administration. No. The Bronx maybe commissioner that, doesn't. The Bronx commissioner uh, gets to stay. It's the agency commissioner that works with the mayor's office. Okay. So it, previously it was uh, Mitchell Silver. Right. And so uh, so he left in summer of last year. Then they uh, then De Blasio appointed a new commissioner till the end of the year. Right so now, we're just waiting for the the agency commissioner to be appointed by the uh, new mayor. Okay. But the, each each borough commissioner is not an appointed position. So, so oh, okay. uh, Commissioner Rodriguez Rosa is still here, as far as I know. Good. Okay. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you, Diana. Um, next, hold on, let's go back to the list. Who do I have up next? Rich, uh, Reynoso. Do you I have want... nothing. You have nothing? Okay. Um, yes. uh, Robert Press. Uh, I just want to ask, uh, you, the person from Parks, and I see the other person isn't here anymore. I had questions for him because of, uh, I know the uh, construction uh, deadlines and what the how long it takes. All right, uh, but uh, how can you say you had extra money last year when supposedly the Bronx Parks Department doesn't have a budget? Okay, that's my one question, and I'll let the next person go. All 
I, I don't understand the question. Bronx Parks does, whoever said Bronx Park does not have a budget. Well, I, I'll put it to you this way. I was a budget chair on another community board, and I went to budget hearings, and every budget request that comes back from the Parks Department says, Parks supports the idea, but has no budget, see elected officials. And when I asked about that, right. I was told I the Bronx Parks that. Department doesn't have a budget. Finish. I'm so sorry. I, I can chime in on that. We don't have our own capital budget. I believe that's what uh, um, how we usually respond to capital requests um, because we don't have our own capital budget. But we do have an expense budget for for maintenance items like uh, as Matt mentioned, trash cans and you know paint and and you know buying materials for maintenance. And Can I answer this, your question? Well, yes, he is correct on that because when we had a uh, lawnmower, a, a tractor break in Van Cortlandt Park, they did replace it. However, again, it's very limited capital expense budget, so they can't go out and buy a thousand trash cans. They can buy maybe ten or twenty. That's what I you know. It's not a large expense budget. Uh, correct. Yes. Thank you. Do you have any other any other questions, Robert? No, I'd like the next person to speak. Thank you. Great. All right. Thank you. And then the last one here is Roxanne Delgado. Yes. Hi. Um, I'd like to make two comments and hopefully get a response to my comments regarding the homeless encampments. We had them at Palm Parkway uh, two years ago, and I think NYPD 49 precinct was amazing in their responses. Unfortunately, Parks didn't respond to it. And again, last summer we were getting um, a new encampment. Again, the 49 precinct um, responded, and it was great how how they do respond. But you know, it's unfortunate because this is under Parks jurisdiction, and when you call NYPD, it can. Roxanne, we lost you. Are you still there? Did you mute yourself by accident? So I think we lost her. Um, well, if she comes back, we'll circle back to her. Um, so I don't see her on my screen anymore. Maybe she lost a connection. Um, all right, if she comes back. Oh, wait, are you there, Roxanne? I see you now. Hello, Roxanne? Okay, well, we'll we'll keep going um, with the agenda and Roxanne, if you can hear us and you're ready, just uh, let me know when you're ready to jump back in to finish your comment. Um, so we're gonna move on to old business. Board members, are the, do you have any old business that you'd like to bring up? Um, Is there, and I'm um, sorry, go ahead. Was that no, you, Debbie? I said no, I said no. no. Okay. Um, is there any new business? Okay, so it doesn't sound like there's any new business really quick for the minutes. We didn't do this, um, at the top of the meeting. So for, for the recording, I'm just gonna read off the attendance. So we have, um, myself, Lisa Soto, uh, Janice Walcott, uh, Debbie. Debbie, for whatever reason, I don't know why your last name will not stay in my head. I apologize. <laughs> but you're writing the minute, so you know your last name. And Edith Blitzer. Um, from uh, Parks, we have Matt Dorian. Uh, we had uh, what was uh, Michael Ortiz. And what was the gentleman's name that was here before? Andrew Penzi. Andrew Pen Penzi. And then members of the public, we have um, Roxanne Delgado, Robert Press, Rich Reynoso, Diana Finch, and Daniel Sun. Did I miss anybody for the minutes for ten minutes? Is, Jan is Janet on the box uh, committee, or is she? Or is she yes. just board no, member? She's, no, she's on the committee. All the board, all okay, the board, no, board members who are here tonight are on the committee. Um, okay, 
You didn't Richard. say you didn't say her name. All right, Richard oh, okay. is a board member, by the way. I, I apologize, Janice. I didn't mean to leave you off. Okay. You didn't leave me off. You said Janice. You oh, did okay. say it. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I heard somebody else in the background. Uh, yeah, Rich Reynoso is a board member. Oh, Rich, you're a board member. Okay. Again, apologies. No worries. Um, <laughs> but you're not on the committee. You're just a board member. Correct? Correct. I'm just here to watch. Gotcha. Perfect. Okay. See, this is what happens when you don't have in-person meetings anymore. You, you Thank you. Know Thank, you the the right. Thank you for the clarification, Rich. Are you, are you one of the newly uh newly appointed people? Rich, are you one of the new appointed? I've been, I've been here since 2020. Well, all right then. Yeah. You're fairly new because I I didn't get to ever meet you. I think face to face because we've been in the pandemic since Correct. 2020. Yeah. Agreed. So yeah, I'm new. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> belated welcome, Rich. <laughs> um, uh, so that concludes the meeting unless Roxanne is back to give the rest of her comments, which I don't hear her. So unfortunately, um, we will. We'll, so we'll conclude our meeting now. Uh, the time is 848. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you, Parks, especially for staying and answering all the questions. We appreciate everything you do for us and for our community. Everybody, have a great night. You also. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.